So, welcome everybody to the last part of chapter 14. Um, I would like to use a theoretical framework to come up with a model which can explain exchange rate changes. So, we are looking at the so-called UIP model for the foreign exchange market. How do we set up a model? Please have a look at these eight steps. In the first step, we have to define the equilibrium conditions. Afterwards, we derive the slope of the curves. In the third step, we determine the equilibrium. And then it's always the case that a shock occurs. Um, one exogenous variable is shocked and the exogenous variable changes. Then we need to know which curve shifts in which direction. And in order to find an answer to this question, we have to use the equations. Um, in the graph, we have to shift the curves and determine the new equilibrium. Afterwards, we are confirming the graphical results by computing multipliers. So by confirming the graphical analysis by a more formal analysis. And in the last step, we compare the graphical results and the formal results and conclude. So let's have a look at the equations. So in the textbook, we have on the left hand side the dollar return and on the right hand side the euro return. And then here the expected change in the exchange rate. I would like to keep this model a little bit more simple and more flexible. So I want to talk about the home return and the foreign return. With this step, it is also possible to analyze, for example, the situation with respect to Poland and the Euroland from a Polish perspective or the situation of the Turkish Lira against the US dollar. So we have a more flexible model in case that we skip the currency indices. So the left hand side is R, the domestic interest rate. Then we have R star on the right hand side. And then the fraction represents the expected change in the exchange rate. The left hand side will be called home return. And the right hand side is called foreign return. So this equation tells you that home return is equal to foreign return. When it comes to a graph, we want to work in a diagram where we put the exchange rate on the vertical axis and we put the home return and the foreign return on the horizontal axis. The home return curve will be a vertical line and the foreign return curve is downward sloping and convex. So, this is the diagram we are going to work with, but in the first step, I would like to confirm that indeed the home return curve is a vertical line and the foreign return curve is downward sloping and is convex. So we need to have a look into the equations once more. So one curve symbolizes the home return and hence the left hand side of the UIP condition. The home return curve is a vertical line because of the fact that this does not depend on the exchange rate. So, for example, in case that the domestic uh, central bank sets the interest rate to the level of 5%, then if you would check here on the horizontal axis, where is the level of 5%? And then we draw a line which represents the interest rate of 5%, the home return. The FR curve is a little bit more complex. So the right hand side of equation number 10 um, is, uh, defines the foreign return. So in equation 11, we have the situation that the foreign return is equal to R star plus the expected change in the exchange rate. In case that we want to compute the slope of this curve, we have to compute DE DFR. Uh, this is the case because E is on the vertical axis and FR is on the horizontal axis. So when we want to determine the slope of this curve, we have to compute DE 
dfr. Therefore, it makes sense to solve equation 11 for the exchange rate because then it's easier to build this differential. Let's do so. We are uh, writing this r on the other hand side of the equation and then we are splitting up the fraction on the right hand side. So you can see here r star with a negative sign on the left hand side of the equation and then we have split the fraction in two terms. In the next step, we can put this one or this minus one on the other hand side of the equation. So we are adding one on both hand sides of the equation and we get to this relationship here. In the next step, of course, we have to multiply through by E. We are multiplying through by E and get to this relationship. And then we are dividing by the term in brackets. We are dividing by this relationship. And then we have isolated E on one hand side of the equation. This is very important because of the fact that we want to determine the slope of the FR curve in an exchange rate return diagram. And therefore we have to compute the differential DE DFR and hence it is easier in case that we have isolated E on the left-hand side of this equation. Uh, let's take this differential. Um, there is a fraction on the right-hand side and therefore we have to use the rule uh, which says um, differential of the numerator times the denominator minus the differential of the denominator times the numerator. When we differentiate the uh, numerator with respect to fr, this is equal to zero. So we have a zero here. And then we multiply through by the denominator. Then we say minus. When we differentiate the denominator with respect to fr, then you can see here one fr. And therefore, the uh, derivative of the numerator is equal to 1, and we multiply through by the numerator. So the differential of the denominator is equal to 1. And then we square the denominator. We get there is a negative sign here, which is afterwards there. We get this expression minus the expected exchange rate divided by a term to the power of 2. So the whole relationship is negative because there is a negative sign in front. So this relationship is negative. The FR curve has a negative slope. In the next step, we could check whether the slope is concave or convex. We have to compute the second derivative. So once more, we have to differentiate this relationship when we differentiate with the numerator with respect to fr, then once more this is equal to zero. We multiply through by the denominator. Then we subtract um, the differential of the denominator, which is equal to two times fr minus r star plus one. And then we multiply through by the numerator. So this term here, 2 times fr minus r star plus 1 in brackets, this is the differential of the denominator. And then we square the denominator. So this 4 stems here from squaring this denominator. So then uh, we have a 0 here. We have a negative sign there, but also a negative sign there. Uh, we have fr minus r star plus 1 in the numerator and 4 times in the denominator. So this can be cancelled out so, this, so that this term in brackets does not appear anymore in the numerator and only 3 times in the denominator. The whole expression is larger than 0 so that the fr curve is convex. So now it is the case that we have like defined the slopes of these curves. Let's go back to the first part of this lecture, 
Well, we talked about the different steps. So I'm talking about slide number 48. So we have defined the equilibrium conditions. We have de derived the slope of the curves. And we have also determined the equilibrium. Of course, the next thing which will happen is we have to identify the shock. So these are the equations. Once more, we have defined the equations. We also have defined this equilibrium here because we determined the slope of the two curves. So the first shock which arrives is that the domestic interest rate increases. Of course, in case that you have no clue how this shock is digested, you have to look into the equations. So we have to go back to the equations once more. We have to go back to slide number 49. It is the case here that the domestic interest rate is on the left-hand side of the equation. So the home return curve is affected. And in case that the domestic interest rate increases, then the home return curve will shift to the right. Let's plug in this information in this graph. So the domestic interest rate increases, the home return curve is affected, home return curve shifts to the right, and then we find the equilibrium in point number B. Um, we are interested in the effect of the exchange rate. The exchange rate decreases, and this implies that the domestic currency is appreciating. So an increase in the domestic interest rates rate leads to a decrease of the exchange rate and a decrease of the exchange rate is an appreciation of the domestic currency. In case that you want to come up with a dynamic story, you could tell the following relationship. So in a first step, the domestic interest rate increases. Uh, this makes an investment in the domestic economy more attractive. The investors are demanding domestic currency and the investors are supplying foreign currency and therefore the domestic currency is uh, strong and the foreign currency is weak. So this little story can explain how do we get from point A to point B? Why is it the case that this increase in the domestic interest rate leads to a decrease of the exchange rate? So we have performed the next step. Um, we analyzed an exogenous shock and we found out how the endogenous variable react. So how this shock is digested. In the next step, we have to confirm these graphical results by a more formal analysis. So uh, I would like to compute a multiplier here. And in the first step, it is pretty important that we clarify which variable is the endogenous variable. So the UIP model consists only out of one equation. And therefore, we can only determine one endogenous variable. Which variable is endogenous? Uh, of course, it is the exchange rate. It is the exchange rate we are going to explain with this model. So the exchange rate is the endogenous variable. And when we perform a comparative static analysis, when we compute a multiplier, then it makes sense to solve for this endogenous variable. So in the following steps, it will be the case that once more, we solve the UIP condition for the endogenous variable, the exchange rate. Let's start. In the first step, we put R star and minus one on the left-hand side of this equation we get to this relationship, R star pops up with a negative sign and the one pops up with a positive sign. In the next step, we put E on the left-hand side of the equation and we divide by R minus R star plus one so that we get to this term. The exchange rate is equal to the expected exchange rate minus the uh, divided by the interest rate differential plus one. So, uh, now we have determined the equilibrium exchange rate level. And when we want to 
compute a multiplier, like we have to differentiate with respect to that variable, which changes. So the exogenous shock arrives at the domestic interest rate, so we have to differentiate with respect to R. Once more, the rule is derivative of the numerator times the denominator, so 0 times the denominator, minus the derivative of the denominator. When we differentiate the denominator with respect to R, we get a 1 times the numerator. Uh, let's check whether this expression is positive or negative. Uh, this term here uh, drops out because of the zero. Then we have a negative uh, sign here, a minus sign, which is here. Uh, we are dividing the expected exchange rate by this relationship, which is squared. So the denominator is definitely positive but there is a negative sign in front of this relationship. So the sign dr, d, d, e, dr is negative, and this implies that there is a negative relationship between these two macroeconomic variables. In case that the domestic interest rate increases, then the exchange rate will decrease. There is a negative relationship between the two macroeconomic variables, and this can be derived from this ne negative sign of this fraction. So this implies that if the domestic interest rate increases, the domestic currency appreciates, the exchange rate decreases. We have confirmed the graphical results by computing a multiplier. Both results point into the same direction. So we confirmed the graphical results by computing the multiplier. So in this uh, chapter, we only looked at one shock, like R star uh, R increased, the domestic interest rate increased. But we can also look at other shocks. For example, what happens if the investors change their exchange rate expectations? What happens to the exchange rate? Or we could also think about what happens if the foreign central bank changes the interest rate, what happens to the exchange rate. So more or less, we can analyze uh, the shocks related to three different variables, shocks related to the expected exchange rate, the domestic interest rate, or the foreign interest rate. And these shocks can be positive or negative, like the uh, exogenous variables can increase or decrease. So we can analyze six different shocks in this UIP model. Thank you very much for attending this part of the lecture. I think this was a very long chapter, chapter 14, very demanding. But uh, I th also think that we gained uh, nice insights into the foreign exchange market. Thank you very much for visiting this lecture. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.